In this video, I want to talk about uh, diagnosing sarcoidosis by its parenchymal uh, manifestations, which is uh, most commonly by perimphatic nodules. Usually, we diagnose sarcoidosis based on uh, bilateral hyalur and intestinal lymphadenopathy, but uh, this represents uh, stage one, and we have also stage two, stage three, and stage four, and stage sarcoidosis present with fibrosis. So, and this here, I will talk about the perimphatic nodules and its significance, not to miss sarcoidosis, and its importance that we should differentiate between sarcoidosis and uh, tuberculosis especially when they are presented by nodular, multinodular lung disease. <clears throat> Here we have a case. I will show some cases to clarify this point. When we are dealing with a multinodular lung disease, we should place the nodules into one of the three distributions. In case of micronodules, we have to place the nodules in either central lobby location, perilymphatic location, or random distribution. Here, as we see that nodules are present along the fissures, as you can see here, and along the pleura, this will deny the centrilobular distribution. Centrilobular distribution is popular in inflammatory or infective endobronchial spread of infection. Uh, and uh, TB is the popular example of endobronchial extension or spread of infection. In literature, before the orientation or awareness of distribution of nodules, it's mentioned even in the radiology recall books that differential diagnosis for multiple nodules, sarcoidosis, TB, and lymphoma. Now we will see that they cannot be differential together. In presence of nodules along the pleura, this will exclude the centrilobular distribution, so this will exclude tuberculosis. It will exclude infection elsewhere. Presence of nodules in perimphatic distribution, it can be seen along the pleura, major and minor fissures, and also along the interlobular septa, causing the nodular appearance of the interlobular thickening will be seen along the bronchovascular bundle, causing its nodularity. And in sarcoidosis, as you can see here, that the distribution is more upper lower than lower lower. This is the craniocaudal distribution, characteristic for sarcoidosis. Upper lower and mid lower or mid zonal predilection with less extent and amount of the nodules in the lower lobes. So here we have perimphatic distribution of nodules. We have upper and mid-zonal uh, predominance. We have also consolidation. This is another feature. As you know, sarcoidosis can present with alveolar pattern. So consolidation can be seen in sarcoidosis. It's not against. So perimphatic distribution along the bronchovascular bundle, nodularity along the bronchovascular bundle, along the interlobular septa, pleural fissure. This is perimphatic distribution. The differential diagnosis here, much far away from tuberculosis or infection. It is sarcoidosis on the top for differentials. Others that can present with perimphatic distribution Pneumoconiosis, particularly silicosis and cool workers, pneumoconiosis, and lymphangitis carcinomatosis, carcinomatosis in the list of differential diagnoses. Let's proceed to the next example. Here we have extensive nodularity. Here in the 
upper lung. You can see the nodules seen along the interlobular septa, as you can see here, and they are present also along the pleural surface. This is perilymphatic distribution. This will dramatically reduce your differential diagnosis here along the fissures, nodules along the fissure. See the nodularity of the fissure here along the interlobular septa. So this is perimphatic distribution. So no way to think of other possibility like media infection or uh, like TB or, inf or TB or fungal infection or endobronchial spread in central rubber location. So here you exclude both random distribution and you exclude central rubber distribution. Again, although it is extensive, you can see the predilection of upper lobe over the lower lobes. See, reduced in lower lobes. So here, sarcoidosis is the top of differential diagnosis. Silicosis and cool workers pneumoconiosis has a tendency to present with calcific pulmonary nodules, which is not the case here. And you can use the mediastinal window to confirm absence of the calcific pulmonary nodules, which is rare to happen in cases of sarcoidosis. So here we have limited differential diagnosis, sarcoidosis and pneumoconiosis only. No place for differential diagnosis, including infection, and which is uh, more popular with the TB. Another example. Here, I want to show you that sarcoidosis typically present in upper lobes, even its fibrosis, which is characteristic presence in upper lobes with continuity of fibrosis from the hyla, which is uplifted here, and continuity until it reach the pleural surface, plus presence of the progressive massive fibrosis. This is, there is here also the unique parapsychiatric emphysematous changes, which occurs in sarcoidosis exclusively. No other entity causes parapsychiatrical emphysema, similar to uh, sarcoidosis, except tuberculosis, which will be unilateral, uh, not asymmetric, but here you have symmetric, bilateral symmetric, upper lower fibrosis, traction bronchiectasis, progressive massive fibrosis, bronchiectasis, bronchiolectasis, but in TB, you will find much less amount of fibrosis. It will be focal. It will be just a region, one region or two regions or asymmetric. And it will not show this package of progressive massive fibrosis, direction bronchiectasis, parapsychiatric emphysema, symmetric in upper lobes. So this appearance is characteristic for Sarcoidosis, again, and differential diagnosis is silicosis in case of absence of parapsychiatric emphysema. But parapsychiatric emphysema is exclusive for sarcoidosis if it presents in this pattern. Another example, again, we back for the perimphatic nodules. As you can see here, it can be clusters, not extensive. Clusters means it can be here in one region and absent in other regions. This is the cluster, multiple nodules. As you can see here, they are along the fissures and pleura and causing interlobular nodular thickening. And there is upper looper predilection over the lower lobes. This is strongly suggestive of sarcoidosis. If you want to add differential diagnosis, it will be for perilymphatic distribution of nodules, which is pneumoconiosis. Here, another case, 
showing the clusters of nodules in perilymphatic distribution seen along the fissures, seen along the fissures here, along the pleura, modularity of the fissure, upper lower predilection, as you can see here, compared to the lower lobes. Here you see the nodules along the interlobular septa, causing nodularity of the interlobular septal thickening. It represents like clusters as well, and scattered, but collectively shown more in upper lobes compared to the lower lobes. And it's even seen in lower lobes in respect of the interstitium along the bronchovascular bundle, along the interlobular septa, along the pleura, either subpleural location or on the fissures. This is the difficult case, which is the aim of this video, that we have here a case showing a typical presentation of sarcoidosis. Suppose this case you came and I'm not talking about now the sarcoidosis. What you are seeing, you are seeing nodules seen along the fissure and multiple clusters of nodules here along the bronchovascular bundle. If you are not oriented of the importance or significance of the distribution, I think most of radiologists will go for tuberculosis because it's not the typical presentation of upper lower bilateral predilection of nodules. There are only clusters here along the fissures in upper and lower lobes with calcification in the hilar lymph nodes, right hilar lymph nodes, and other contralateral hilar lymph nodes with consolidation present in right lower lobe without orientation of the distribution that it is perilymphatic, most of radiologists or interpreters will go for tuberculosis, but this will be changed dramatically into sarcoidosis because of the distribution along the fissure the perimphatic distribution, nodularity of the bronchovascular bundle along the fissure, and it's not obvious here along the interlobular septa, not along the pleural surface too much, but it's now it's present obviously in two locations, major fissure and bronchovascular bundle. If you are not placing the nodules in the correct place, in the correct distribution, you will go for tuberculosis. And this sarcoidosis was confirmed by bronch alpha lavage showing non caseating granulomas. And as you know, tuberculosis has caseating granulomas in bronch alpha lavage. And this case was difficult for interpretation and without the orientation of the perimphatic distribution should, can be mistaken easily into an inflammatory process, tuberculosis most likely. But if you are oriented of the perimphatic distribution, you not mention TB at all because TB and central rubrial nodules will not present along the fissures, as you can see here in this case. And I hope the idea about focusing on the perilymphatic distribution or central level distribution of random distribution is your systemic approach for approaching multinodular disease. As you can see here in this case, which is a teaching or educational case for the importance of placing the nodules in the correct distribution. And thanks for your patience and attention. Thanks.